Welcome to the Prelude to Computer Science series, video number 12, Other Languages and the Concept of a Variable. Recall that our imaginary processor are, is a 4-bit processor and it has four instructions. It could have more than, many, many more than uh, just four instructions. Um, and uh, th th these four instructions are not enough to make it a general purpose computer, but it's, it's enough to write a very trivial, simple program that just demonstrates some of the basic ideas and the uh, some of the ideas of machine language coding and the, f the uh, four instructions are halt which just stops processing load that loads a value directly into the register store that stores a register to a memory location and add that adds the contents of memory to a register so the program that we wrote with the ones and zeros that's called a machine language program and that machine language program is the only kind of program that the computer inherently understands uh, if you uh, those if those if that sequence of ones and zeros appears in memory and then you point the program counter in other words set the value of the program counter to the first location uh, of your program in memory then the uh, computer will execute your program uh, uh, directly. It doesn't need to be translated or anything. It will, it will uh, execute that program directly. So here's a, just a copy of our program that we had previously. And let's take a look at the next, look at this, and, and ones and zeros is just really confusing. It's just a, a really, uh, it's, it's easy to make mistakes. I made a number of mistakes when I was, uh, got tangled around. I haven't done this kind of thing for many years. Uh, and it's just a very tedious thing to do. In fact, professionally, I've only known one person in my life who uh, regularly programmed in machine code. I, I know I've known several people who who augmented their regular programming uh, with machine uh, language programming, but I've only known one person who who uh, regularly and mainly programmed in machine language. It's a it's a it's a rare thing actually. So the sequence of ones and zeros that uh, program in that in in ones and zeros is is called uh, a machine language program. What we really uh, would one step up of this is uh, we could write a program in assembler. Now assembler is very much like machine code, except that uh, instead of writing in ones and zeros, we write uh, in these mnemonic codes. Uh, and there's almost a one-to-one -one mapping between machine code and assembler. It's not exact, uh, but for the purposes of what we're saying, we'll, for the purpose of this simple example, we'll just say that that there's a, a that for every machine code instruction, there's an assembler instruction, and vice versa. So uh, this is what an assembler language program might look like uh, that corresponded to that machine language program. So. Uh, but then the computer doesn't understand that assembler language program. That assembler program has to be converted. There has to be a program, another program that already exists on that computer. And that program is called an assembler. And that assembler program, you have to execute that assembler and it will take the assembler code as input and produce the machine code as output. So an assembler is a program itself. It is a program that knows how to translate programs written in assembly language into uh, a program in machine code, which is a sequence of binary opcodes. So here we have a diagram of what the assembler does. The assembler is a program uh, that the computer already understands, and what it does is it converts code that is in assembly language into uh, executable uh, machine language code that can just be run right on the computer. Uh, so the little the the um, uh, parallelogram on the top there uh, is the input. That's the program that you would write, and then that is the input for this uh, assembler program that the uh, that the computer already uh, understands. Uh, that already exists on the computer. And then the output is the uh, parallelogram on the bottom, which is a sequence of ones and zeros that the computer can immediately execute uh, if, that's, uh, if that's your desire. 
Now, th this code, this uh, assembly language program, is a lot easier to read than the machine language code, uh, which was just ones and zeros, but it's still pretty tedious. Machine language and assembly language are what we call low-level languages. They're very close to the machine. Uh, we need something that's a little bit easier and less error-prone. Uh, some, something much easier than this, something that's kind of natural, and that leads us into the concept of uh, higher level programming languages. So what we really want to have is instead of that big mess on the left there, uh, what we really want is something like on the right, where we just say y is equal to 2 plus 3, and the answer that we want is in y. Um, and that's exactly what the higher level languages allow us to do. So every uh, uh, statement that we write in a higher level language can translate to 2 or 3 or 20 uh, of these very low level uh, machine language instructions. Of course now we need a translator that will translate this high level stuff into the binary codes that the computer understands. Because remember, the computer only understands the binary codes. Now, in higher level languages, one of the central concepts is a thing called a variable. In the statement y is equal to 2 plus 3, which is what we really want to do, um, y is a variable, but what is a variable? Now, a variable has four characteristics. Actually, it has more than four characteristics, but four is all we need to know for now. A variable is a named piece of storage that has a value and an interpretation. So it ha the four things are it has a name, which is a, s a sequence of characters that identify it. It has a location in memory. It has a type or an interpretation. And it has a value. Now the value is just a set of ones and zeros. But the, uh, that, we, all, we, that we would call that contents. It has a contents. But the actual value is dependent upon the type or how you interpret those, that sequence of ones and zeros. So again, we have a sequence of me we imagine that memory is this contiguous uh, piece of um, a segment on our chip, and it has these it has uh, addresses that that go from zero up to however much memory you have. And when we say y is equal to two plus three. The, we want the computer to figure out, okay, just go find some free memory somewhere, some memory that's not being used, and call that Y. So Y is just a block of memory somewhere. We don't know where it is. We don't care where it is, but we want to always be able to identify it by Y. So in our higher level, uh, in, in statement in our higher level language, Y is equal to 2 plus 3, it takes the values 2 and 3, it loads those into the register without us even talking about the register. We didn't say anything about the register. We just said 2 plus 3. It loads those values into the register, it adds them together, and then it stores them back in some memory location called Y. Now in our example, uh, Y is location 200,578. But in our high level language, the high level language doesn't even, we don't even care. It keeps track of what that address is for us so that we don't have to memorize that big number. So that is how a variable is used. We, conceptually, we just think of it in these terms. That's the end of video number 12. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, most of the rest of our videos will concentrate on uh, uh, concepts of actual programming. Thank you.